Hello, how are we doing? That's my impression of a 70s accent. Um, because today, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different for Geo Detective, your favourite, lots of you's favourite series. But I'm hoping that you'll really enjoy this one because instead of just one image, uh, instead of just one image, which is what I usually do, I'm going to be watching a whole video. It's only a minute long and it's one of those really weird and creepy uh, 1970s, 1980s government information videos. Don't go near deep water, etc, etc. Don't talk to strangers. Some of them are hilarious. I don't know if you had them in your own country, but as were quite funny, some of them, but also terrifying. And this one is called Your Litter Will Kill You. So you can watch it, but you can also keep an eye open for possible clues that might come in useful. Now, why did you let her do that? Just about had enough of clearing up after that little madden. And you? Dunno. Our place is a mess anyway. Dunno! Every time my son borrows the car, it comes back stinking like a filthy ashtray. That's all right, does it? It gives people jobs. Yeah, no. Can't do any harm. Put it out of the way. This is where things get. Serious. Everyone's got an excuse. What's yours? You know, pretty powerful, and I agree with it, actually. It's a bit extreme, but that's what I like about these public information films. As the guy says in the description here, uh, which doesn't give away the location, I haven't looked in the comments. So, let's rewind. Uh, what city do we think this is in, first of all? I think it's in London, or am I wrong? Am I just thinking that because of the accents that we used in the video? Be cool to try and uh, put a put a date on this as well, a year. So whenever this was, I wasn't born, that's for sure. This car looks like it's from about 1980, but it could be slightly younger, I don't know. We've got a Denny's, that could come in useful. And that's probably why I was thinking London, the red bus. I didn't actually fully take that on board before but that is a london bus and these flats as well look quite okay. londony but this is make no mistake this is going to be hard to find even if it is london um london is huge city as we learned with aaron amberleaf uh the second or third of these i ever did and the only one i failed to find uh london can be very very hard because of its size so I'm just wondering what that is back there. That's a tall, that's a tall building which will probably still be there. And that's going to come in useful too, unless it's been demolished. That could easily have been demolished. Some of you might be thinking, oh, he's got to find this in no time. But honestly, I am kind of dreading this. This could be really hard. Denny's Shop UK. Let's find out the history of this shop quickly. Really? Is that what we're looking at? I don't know if that's the same brand there. All right. Denny's London. There's only one Denny's in the UK and it's in Swansea. So it's, it's definitely not that. But what was the old UK Denny's? Our problem here is that the American Denny's is going to dominate the searches. 62 Berners Street. Well, what's this? Denny's brand. Denny's uniforms. Could we have found it already? Surely not. If I found this, then I'm going to have to do another one of these films in this same video. I think that's too central. I don't think we can be there, but let's have a look. Absolutely no chance. This is right in the middle of London. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad it wasn't that easy. It does say Denny's, doesn't it? Hmm, I wonder if there's anything right at the start. What's this shop here? Mecca? CCA. That that could just say CCA. Let's try and find that one. Shop UK. CCA Glasgow. Contemporary Arts. 
Ah, well that that adds up, doesn't it? Because this is art, apparently. <laughs> well, could we be? In, no, we can't be in Glasgow. CCA Arts Goldsmith Centre for Contemporary Art. Where's that then? Could we be here? <laughs> this is fun. This is funny. It's got that vibe, hasn't it? It's good. We're in that sort of area. It does look like an M. MCCA Chartered Accountants. Where's that then? Oh, Mile End, that is. MCCA Chartered Accountants. But do you see any evidence? No. Okay, so this gallery opened in 2018, so very recent. So where was it before? God, I don't get art. Show, showroom. And then if we go on search tools from 2001 to 2015, Whitechapel Gallery, London. Okay, let's try that. I still think it's too central, definitely. It's ridiculously central. Okay, let's leave that for now. Bit of a dead end. Derry's? Maybe that's Derry's. Oh, that's not confusing, is it? London Derry. Huh. Plymouth City Centre store Derry's shuts after 57 years. Derry's department store Plymouth. Let's get to that bus and just confirm that this is a London bus from a certain era. That's pretty similar, I'd say. No, it's slightly different, but it's got a white band there. I can't really find the exact bus, but it's a London bus. I think it's safe to say that. So that's going to help me keep ourselves in London, stop messing around in Plymouth. Okay, I'm at a point now where unless I go anywhere with this CCA or Denny's, we are going to fall off a cliff into a sea of searching the streets of London um, for everything to line up, which could be a messy, messy long-winded affair. If you were to ask me where I think this is, I, I would, it's anyone's guess, but I would start looking in places like this, Brentford, Acton, Wembley, I don't know, a little bit out from the centre. The problem we've got there is that could easily have been demolished because it's quite unsightly and quite 70s, quite 60s. This block of flats could have gone. It's 50-50. That there could have gone very easily. I'd say that's more likely to have gone than not. And the big building in the background probably still exists. I'm just judging this on what they tend to demolish. Danny's? Let's, let's just try, let's just eradicate. A load of options. Dealt with it, but let's, let's try it. Deptford. There's Danny. There he is. The definition of tack, isn't it? Blimey. Even his own name, his own questionable name, peeling right off. <laughs> we are not here. Let's see if I can find a video with slightly better, better quality. Okay, this one's a compilation. Just looks like Denny's to me. But it could be Derry's. Ooh, what's that say? MP in sex. Sex what? Romp? Why do they have to... Is that real? I don't know if anything's real or not, still. Our place is a mess anyway. Every time. Detroit. What's inside that? It seems like a bank or something. What is that? Derry's f <laughs> Ah, what's this? CCA Galleries Limited. That's more like it. Limited edition prints. Yeah. So we're back on the CCA thing. Oh, 8 Holland Street Gallery. Yeah, I think so. That is seriously posh around there. This is like one of the wealthiest areas in London. Ha! <laughs> it's not funny. Do not dump rubbish here. Don't worry, mate. We have been told. Let's try some more of these, man. Brook Gallery. Right, day two, this is. Um, I had to 
cut it off yesterday after nearly two hours. Nearly two hours that was. So fresh head today. Let's see if we can crack the nut. I'm trying to just find the old CCA logo. So that there, if that is what this is. I think it is because of these pieces of art in the window. But if I can just prove that, then we know that. So we can go further down that avenue. So I'm wondering if there's anything on eBay. There's all sorts of crap on eBay. There might be an old catalog or something. There's one from 2001. I've got an idea. It might not work, but if we can see what these are, they look like animals. Look at that. It's That's a man because you can see the sleeve there. Don't know why I didn't think of this yesterday, but this will be a real piece of art. Or will it? Is everything in this fake? We don't actually know. But is that a horse? Can't be a dog, it's too big. But I'm gonna say it's a horse because he looks like a jockey. Modern art horse painting. <laughs> Jesus. Can't see that one, that's covered by this twat. That's that, that's the one we have to use. Not getting anything. I could contact them. That is tempting to email them. I'll do it. Okay, I am screenshotting a couple of things. Okay, I've sent them a nice email um, with these images attached. I don't think they'll get back to me. I think they've got bigger things to do, but who knows? That will be the strangest email I think they've received in quite some time. Here's a route we can go down. London Bus Routes, 1978. It, it, it's gonna be full of routes, but it's better than just, you know, if I do have to go you know, in on the map, just searching blindly, then at least I'll have some guidance, some some little veins that I can hone in on. Can't see the bus number, can we? Oh, that's so annoying. No. Fuck, that is involved. <laughs> Shit. Can we get that? If I could overlay that onto Google Earth, that would be really, that'd be really helpful. I'm not gonna be able to do that, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna go into Google Earth now and I'm gonna do my first bit of searching because I think if I get 3D buildings on and look down a few high streets of, of outskirt areas of London, like Golders Green or something, um, then maybe I'll come across it just based on those taller buildings that we had and just the vibe of it. So let's give that a go. So we're in London. I'm gonna get those three buildings up, 3D buildings. Okay. Doesn't look like I'm gonna get a lot of the smaller buildings. I'm in East London at the moment because I've decided it does look a bit shit. So I'm starting there. We are getting a fair few tower blocks. So maybe I can just skim around and try and find that big wide tower block because it looks it's very large it's very wide i like this idea though of finding these i feel like if we find a good number i think we've got like a, a fairly good chance so just finding them and then finding a high street that adds up i like this this is fun it's you can move around pretty damn quickly using this method we just got to hope it hasn't been demolished not the right shape. Doesn't have the thing on top. No, they're not right. Trellic Tower, no. BBC Studios. Queen's Park Rangers. Could easily be that building because the top of that's new. Ah, nah, can't be that. I know there's other tall buildings around here. They're just not loading. There's a website which I know called Skyscraper Page dot com and if you type in a city these are all the tallest buildings in london these aren't useful but we might be able to find this building here because this page also includes demolished or destroyed buildings and you could probably set a date range or a height range which can really narrow the search and if we look at this there are two things on top and when you add that to the the squareness of it it is very square overall 
That's going to really narrow it down, I'm hoping. We're going to go built, destroyed, 30 meters minimum, 70 meters maximum, or 80, just to be safe. Year minimum, maximum, 1985. Here we go. This is it. This is exciting. How many are there? Oh, there's a lot. There is a lot. See, already that could be it. To me, the building looks about 40, 50 meters tall, but it could be closer because the imagery is poor. It's hard to tell how near or far it is, big or small it is. Portman Towers. That's an option. Let's just whiz through at the moment. Temple Court, London. Where was that then? Well, that can't be it. It's very central. CI Tower. High Street, Kingston upon Thames. Sadly, it can't be it. None of the roads line up with it. Okay, I've paused it here after a hell of a lot of searching, by the way, um, using this system. I've been through them all. I don't know what I can say, but there's a chance I've missed something somehow. I'm now just going through the whole of the UK on this diagram, which is nearly a thousand buildings within these parameters. I know we're, we're in and around London, but I'm just looking, you know, maybe there's something in like Staines or Slough or something. Hemel Hempstead, that's exactly what we want. Kodak House, Hemel Hempstead. Let's try it. Nah. Okay, nothing. Oh, God. I'm clocking off for the night. This is harder than I thought it would be. Right, you join me now a few days after the last clips you've just seen. And, you know, with a fresh head, explored a few new avenues. I focused a lot on this artwork trying to find what looks to be a black dog there or a black horse. Absolutely exhausted Google images, just all images on the internet. I really don't think these are on here. Went really hard down the contemporary art route. Looking up every single contemporary art studio or shop that exists in London. Researching several 70s and 80s contemporary artists and finding out every exhibition they've been involved with, which gallery they were held at, checking them out on Google Earth. No reply from the people at CCA, by the way, um, who probably thought I was having them on. I then spent a whole load of time trying to figure out what this shop on the left was because it seems to say J Windmill. So I've scoured the net for that and various variations of that on Facebook posts, etc. I even went on Ancestry.com to see if I could find a John, James or Jack Windmill. But there were thousands of them, so I ended up starting my own family tree instead. I went really hard down the Denny's route, discovered a couple of other businesses called Denny's. Uh, in and around London over the years, which have disbanded, but they weren't the right ones. I've scoured the net um, for nostalgic photographs of old London cafes, just in case Denny's or Danny's was a cafe. The newest thing I've been doing is scouring Facebook, um, because Facebook is a place, it's the main place, I would say, where people will make nostalgic groups about times of old and places of old. It's got to be one of the biggest databases of that. So I've I've exhausted Denny's uh, on Facebook. I've seen some mind-numbing posts about meals out in Denny's in London, Ontario. And now I'm going down the CCA Gallery London route on Facebook because if it existed, which it it seems like it does, or it did, surely it's got to be on the internet. But frustratingly, there was nothing, and I was forced back into the gigantic chasm that was the geographical search. I did start by consulting the Skyscraper City page again, just in case I'd missed something, and although there was the odd decent result, I could safely say that not a single building on that website was near our street. So I ended up just 
basically searching the whole of London. After about my third visit to Dulston High Street, I decided to take a break from this. We're exploring the world of Victorian bay windows, which did produce some half decent results, but nothing that close to the distinctive tall arches we had on our building. I even tried replicating the graffiti tag on paint using the spray can feature, but sadly there were no reverse image searches for that one. Well, I've officially tried everything. My previous geodetective was enormously challenging and frustrating, but at least it was the entire world that I was attempting to search. In this case, I knew it was London, but I felt like I'd gotten no closer to finding the location than when I first watched the damn thing. Then, after a total of about 10 hours of searching, a seemingly bog-standard Google search gave me the stroke of luck that I'd been praying for. Oh my god. The amount of time I have spent looking through CCA galleries, contemporary artists, it is Mecca. It's Mecca bookmakers, which I've never heard of. It's long since closed down, but you can see clearly the horse racing. And that explains why this place seems not very well off. It doesn't seem like a well off, a wealthy suburb. And that's the main thing that was confusing me about this whole thing. How can you have a CCA Christie's art gallery in an area that's kind of run down? As that bloke said, whole place is a mess anyway. I mean, the main thing that was confusing me is that I couldn't find any CCA galleries. Uh, but <laughs> let's have a look at this now. That there, it just looked like a blob to me. I cannot wait to start searching here. This is the biggest breakthrough I've had by a country mile. I am 95% sure that it's gonna lead us to the suburb. But it might not be easy. Remember, 1987 is a long time ago, way before the years of the internet. And the information of these locations, of these mecha bookmakers, might not be on the net. But I'm confident that there will, there will be something. There'll, there'll be, if not a photo, there will be some info on some Facebook group. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the thought of these art experts coming back to me and saying, they are not pieces of art, my good sir. They are mere betting shop posters. Look at that. Look at that. That, that could even be our place. Coffee house restaurant. Is that Denny's? No. That was a few doors down. But this is now where we can really turn the screw with these searches. So, look at these beautiful pictures of 1986, 1987. They're not that beautiful, but they're beautiful to me after what has been a gruelling search. But annoyingly, this search was far from over. There were quite a few images of Mecca bookies on the net, including one next to a newsagent's and one with a London bus in front of it. I even stumbled across this. That's quite funny. There's a piece of artwork of the artwork that I thought was artwork but wasn't. What are the odds of that? But after reverse image searching a few times, I soon got to the point where I'd seen every single image of a Mecca Bucky on the net. Some of them were in similar looking areas, but none of them matched up. I needed to dig deeper into the world of Mecca bookies, if that was possible. Let's find a bit about William Hill. William Hill bought this. This is, this could be tricky, you know, because Mecca is the name of uh, a bingo place. So if I, Dan, that's still going. So if I put in Mecca London on Facebook, here we go, look, Mecca bingo, Mecca bingo. 
And at the moment, I can't even find out when Mecca bookmakers cease to exist, which could help me. I will get there. I've cracked the nut, definitely, but it's quite a small crack. I just need to find the tools to prise it open. These are the kind of posts you want. People called Sandra reaching out to fellow staff who worked in Mecca bookmakers in the late 80s, early 90s. These are the kind of really niche things that we want, completely non-commercial. But nothing. Dang. Right, 1989 is seemingly when Mecca bookmakers merged with William Hill, which explains why I've never heard of it. Got the profits of Mecca up to 88. Ah, I've actually found a list here of a few Mecca bookmakers. This won't be all of them by any means, but I mean, if this is 10% of them, then I'm gonna I'm gonna type these addresses in to Google Earth and let's see what comes up. This is quite exciting. This was probably the most enjoyable chapter in this search. There was hope and anticipation every time the little guy went down. At this point, I was very open to the idea that certain buildings had been demolished and replaced, so I had to be very thorough in my sizing up. If there was a building that looked 70s or older, where one of our buildings was supposed to be, then this couldn't be the street. And as the streets rolled by, I was one step closer to another dead end. No, and this is the last one. The last one on this list. We ain't going to get a better list than that either. I don't know how they're all in London. Last one, can you imagine? No. That was exciting, but it, it didn't work. Not sure where we'll go from here. Okay, this is telling us how many bookies there are in each postcode. And there are a lot. 25 in NW1 alone. 26 in Kingston-upon-Thames. 35% of those were Mecca. So I've just searched about 20, but there were actually, I don't know, three or 400. So no wonder we didn't find it. If we had a list of all of them, then great, but we don't even have that. So I think it's back to Google Images. The frustrating thing about this now is I'm still geographically no closer. London, that's about it. We need one more breakthrough. So it was back to the drawing board once again, which meant searching the streets of London till I was blue in the face. By this point, I'd put more little yellow men down than the guy who started the great Lego factory fire of 1942. And I'd definitely exhausted a lot of the inner areas like Hackney or Brixton. So I focused a lot more on the far out areas like Hornchurch, Gants Hill or Bromley. And it was in these areas that I realised that you could actually tell how far out from the centre of London you were based on the architecture of the main shopping buildings. These Art Deco 1920s, 1930s ones could usually be found further out, whereas the Victorian style ones in, in our video would be closer in. Then I remembered a brilliant video that I'd seen not too long ago on YouTube, which actually shows you the year that each urban area of London was built. Even with those outer areas ruled out though, I was once again stumped. I wasn't going to give up on this, but I was finding myself spending less and less time on it. An hour a day, perhaps. One day I went super sweaty with the advanced search function on Google, trying to fish for specific sentences that may have been written about Denny's or J. Windmills in a specific date range. 
During this time, I stumbled across a very useful website that had archived every single newspaper that had ever been released in the UK, or at least a hell of a lot of them. Its search capabilities were really good, even better than Google's, I'd say, and at one point I was actually quite confident that I'd find something on here. However, after about the 85th article about Wings guitarist Denny Lane, I was done. One other last ditch idea I had was to try and track down an old school London graffiti tagger to see if he or any of his mates could recognise this UCA tag. I trawled londongraffiti.co.uk's enormous wall right back down to its 2007 origins. That's it. That's the end. Before emailing the owner, but I was ignored once more. I had no choice but to use the one remaining rather pathetic ace up my sleeve. Right, bit of a moment of truth here. It's been a couple of days since I paid three quid to view the full accounts for Kamek, who apparently owned Mecca Bookies at that time. And yeah, let's see if we get a list of Mecca Bookmakers premises in 1987. I don't think we will. Nope. Mecca bookmakers take one last final three quid off someone in 2023. Unbelievable. Just a few minutes after this, I came across this BBC article and decided to head back over to the infamous Green Street to take another look. For a moment, I thought I had it. I didn't have it, but it did prompt me to go on a bit of a Google image search, just looking for 70s images of Green Street, which then turned into 70s images of Market Streets. Somehow a lot of these Market Streets shared that rundown 60s vibe that our street had. Then this one popped up. That's got to be it. Oh my God, that's got to be it. Oh my God, man. No, wait a minute, I've got to confirm this. I've got to confirm this. They are very close. They seem darker in this, but actually, maybe they're not that dark. It's these buildings over here which have done it for me. I don't believe this. This is the most incredibly happy I've been on any of these things. I actually feel a bit emotional. So, this is fascinating. That building is new. Unless they've used the empty shell. Yeah, they may have even used the empty shell of that. Oh my God, the wall is still there. It's the same wall. <laughs> and the flats are still there. It's all still there, man. Look at that. I don't believe it. I was convinced that the reason that I wasn't finding this was because these had been demolished, this had been demolished, and that had been demolished. And these, for that matter. None of them have. I'm quite slightly embarrassed, um, but quite flabbergasted by that. Now, one thing that surely has changed where is that tall building? Don't tell me that that tall building there is just a building on this street. Like that one. Oh my god. That's going to be even more embarrassing. No, it can't be. It's the same height. Right, I'm going to get out of here. What area are we in, first of all? I mean... I've searched this. I don't know why this has slipped through the net, but it bloody well has. Maybe the market put me off as well. Doesn't put you in mind of somewhere a bus could come down. But anyway, I'm just trying to I'm trying to find this elusive tall building that would have been in the background. I'm trying to desperately prove that it's been demolished. In, in the 90s or something to make me feel a bit better about this whole thing. Somewhere on that line, 
There's got to have been a tall building. I know it goes directly through that one. I'm praying it's. I'm praying it's not that. That's going to be so embarrassing. East Street Market, 1971. This should be fun. No sign of Denny's, by the way. <laughs> Seemingly no living proof of the Mecca bookmakers either. Have I definitely got the right place? No, I definitely have. And then the other thing was J Windmill. I mean, I would have found these places if there was stuff on them on the internet anyway. There just isn't. Right, I've got to face facts, I think. And accept that that there isn't a distant tall building, but in fact a shorter, more nearer building that just seems far away because of the colour. I mean, it's the same shape. It's slightly taller than that one when you discount the new roof. So I just feel a bit like an idiot on that one as well. Um, I'm now very quickly going to reverse image search these two images because if I were to have given up at any point, that's probably what I would have done first. So nothing from that one. Similar thing. Ah, now and then Woolworth. Yeah, look, that one would have done it. That's unbelievable. That's crazy how it's found that. It's from the other direction, but because it's a symmetrical building, it's actually clocked the shape of it. Well, well, I'm very relieved that that's over, but a little disappointed in myself that I didn't find it sooner and spent so much time looking. Um, as I said, I probably took one look at this and thought, that's too light. There's markets here permanently. You know, if you go to any year, there's markets there. And also the lack of tall building in the background um, because that was part of my thinking. Another thing that could well have confused me is this building that I was so sure was Victorian or 1900s, it seems was built in 1934, look, but built in the style of a Victorian building. When you look at it from above, it just looks like a housing estate, the whole of this thing. Well, it is. It is one. A much more modern housing plan that I would have just passed off as a 60s housing estate and not the Victorian row of buildings that I thought it was. I can't be too hard on myself, though, as I put the marker down because London is absolutely gigantic. Um, I know that now more than ever. Anyway, there is no use in rambling any longer, guys. Um, I found it. Uh, the next one won't be so left field and different. I'll, I'm going to go back to the photos, going to get back to some good old classic Geo Detective. Um, so you can look forward to another one of those. I'm already looking forward to it. I'm getting better as I go. I'm in the zone now, and these bring me so much reward i would say not feeling the joy right now thanks for watching guys see you soon